On April 23rd, I released a video to this channel talking about how the FCC's repeal of Title II net neutrality protections had partially went into effect as of that day. And a lot of media outlets also reported the same thing because that was the day the repeal of net neutrality was supposed to take effect. However, contrary to popular belief, net neutrality is still here. It's not dead just yet, and it's because for some reason the FCC is now choosing to stall the official release of its repeal. Now, as Carl Bode of Vice explains, while numerous news outlets claimed net neutrality officially died this week, that's not technically true. Before net neutrality rules can truly be scrubbed from the books, the repeal needs to not only be posted to the Federal Register, but the U.S. Office of Management and Budget needs to sign off on the flimsy replacement protections proposed by the FCC. But consumer advocates this week pointed out that the FCC appears to be intentionally delaying the final repeal via intentional bureaucratic gridlock. Harold Feld, one of the foremost authorities on FCC and telecom policy, wrote a blog post this week noting that the delay is particularly unusual for an FCC that falsely proclaimed that the rules had a massive negative impact on ISP's ability to invest in broadband networks. This is to say the least highly unusual, Feld observed. There's absolutely no reason for FCC Chairman Ajit Pai to have stretched out this process so ridiculously long. It is especially puzzling in light of Pai's insistence that he had to rush through the repeal of net neutrality over the objections of just about everyone but the ISPs and their cheerleaders. So why is the Trump FCC stalling on formally killing rules and professors were devastating to the telecom sector? The most popular theory is that ISPs and the FCC wanted more time to garner support for their effort to pass a bogus net neutrality law, a law they promise will solve the net neutrality feud once and for all, but whose real intention is to preempt tougher state laws and block the FCC's 2015 rules from being restored in the wake of a possible court loss. While it may seem like ISP scored a major victory with last December's vote at the FCC, that's simply not the case. Given the FCC's bizarre behavior during the repeal, ranging from ignoring comment fraud and identity theft during the public comment period to making up a DDoS attack, the repeal remains on some shaky legal ground courtesy of FCC ethical gaffes. In addition to their looming legal challenge, ISPs are worried that more than half the states in the country are now pursuing their own net neutrality laws. And while ISPs successfully lobbied the FCC to include language in their repeal, trying to ban states from protecting consumers, their legal authority on that front is dubious as well. So make no mistake about it, it's not like Ajit Pai is delaying the repeal of net neutrality because he suddenly had a change of heart and sees what we've been trying to tell him all along. That's not what this is. He's doing this at the behest of ISPs who want more time to not only lobby Congress, but lobby state governments who are planning their own net neutrality rules as well. Isn't that interesting? Because they know that the FCC's preemption of states, basically blocking states from doing their own net neutrality rules, that is something that, as the article states, is legally dubious. I mean, does the FCC have the authority to preempt states? That's yet to be seen. So what the FCC is doing on behalf of ISPs is blocking this so ISPs can maybe persuade state governments to not actually follow through with their own net neutrality laws because they know that maybe those laws would stick. So the question now is when is the repeal of net neutrality officially going to go into effect? We don't know. <laughs> That's yet to be seen. So, I mean, certainly this is good news, but for all the wrong reasons. It's... <laughs> It's being delayed so we can get fucked over even more. So, I mean, everything that Ajit Pai does is at the behest of ISPs. Now, this goes without saying, of course, we don't know Ajit Pai's true intent here. That's just what um, Feld was speculating. However, he is someone with a lot of credibility when it comes to the FCC and telecom policy. So if he says that this is done at the behest of ISPs, then I'm inclined to believe him. So certainly net neutrality is still a thing. The net is still technically neutral. Um, but it's only because ISPs are trying to set themselves up for longevity with this repeal. They want to make sure that they don't have to fight this fight every time we get a new president who appoints a new FCC chair. They want to make sure that this is the last time 
they ever have to deal with lobbying the FCC and Congress to repeal net neutrality. But unfortunately for them, it's not. Net neutrality is going to be something that we will always fight for because it's something that's necessary. The internet should remain free and open. And that's something that we just will always care about. We're just not going to suddenly think that, uh, you know, maybe net neutrality isn't that important. So this is all shady. I mean, it, it's so frustrating that even good news with regard to net neutrality really is just news that's really better for ISPs who are gearing up to screw us over. It's frustrating, but look, we have to be cognizant of what they're doing and hypersensitive to any changes we see coming down from the FCC. So certainly watch what your state government is doing because chances are if there's a net neutrality bill that's already been proposed and introduced, there are big telecom companies lobbying against it. So make sure you call your state lawmaker and let him or her know you support this and you want not only net neutrality, but public broadband while you're at it. Support this podcast by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash humanist report.